the Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. If y'all would, would y'all pray with me? Praise God. Heavenly Father, as we plead your holy and precious blood, Lord Jesus Christ, we thank you. We see all the youth making their way to youth service. Father, bless them. Bless Pastor Tish and Pastor Mary, Father God, as they bring your word. Heavenly Father, as we sit here in, in your holy building, Open Arms Community Church, Father, we're just overwhelmed by your presence. Lord Jesus Christ, we cannot understand. We cannot understand how you would speak the word so that we would exist. Knowing what you would have to go through. Knowing what you continue to go through. And how in this fallen world, how we continue to hurt you. And Father, all I can say is I plead the blood of Lord Jesus Christ. All I can say, Father God, is forgive us. Forgive me, Father, when I hurt you. And Father, even though I know I'm forgiven because, Lord Jesus Christ, you are my master, my savior, that's not good enough, Father. Change me that I don't hurt you. Change me, Father God. Change the way I breathe. Change the way I think. Change the way I speak. Change the way I talk. Change the way I walk, Father God. I want to be everything that you want me to be, not what Joey wants to be. Open Arms to Me Church wants you to be God, not Open Arms to be how Open Arms wants to be. We want you, Holy Spirit. We want your presence, and that's all we want. And Father, as we bless you in these next few moments, Father, we don't know. We don't know, Father. We don't know if the trumpet's going to sound here in the next half an hour. But Father God, what we do know is that you're coming back for us soon. What we do know is Jesus Christ is Lord and that he reigns for all of eternity. What we do know is your Holy Spirit lives in every beloved child of yours, Father God. And it's all in the name above every name, Lord Jesus Christ. What we do know, Father, is that you love us. And the love that you have for us, Father God, it goes beyond what we can understand and comprehend. And we just thank you, Father God, that in this love, as one body in you, Lord Jesus Christ, we come together. We thank you, Father God, for the snow outside. We thank you, Father God, for just everything that you're doing, Lord. We give you all the glory, honor, and praise. It's in Jesus Christ's name and all God's beloved said. Amen. Amen. God bless you guys. Hallelujah. Oh, God is good. Oh, God. It just keeps getting gooder and gooder. Hallelujah. Oh, it just keeps getting gooder and gooder. Praise God. Brother Brandon Church starts at 630. Yeah. That's the first time, hallelujah, like three years, praise God, hallelujah. <laughs> I'm just kidding, brother. It's just, all right, praise God, he's smiling. Hallelujah. You ever have those brothers who are like, we're just kidding, we're just joking, we're good. The title of this message is Conviction, amen? Say it with me, Conviction. And uh, if you pull it up on YouTube later or um, on Facebook, the, 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 the full title is Conviction versus Condemnation. And there is a difference. Amen. The Holy Spirit's going to teach us tonight the difference. And in His presence, and only in His presence, Sister Ashley, Holy Spirit will reveal the areas in our lives that we feel condemned. And by the grace and mercy of God, as He exposes, if we allow Lord Jesus Christ, He will get rid of that once and for all. Can I get an amen? Hallelujah. Are you ready? Praise God. Are you ready? Amen. So we're going to be in Romans 8. We're going to jump to 814, and then we're going to close strong in 1 John um, chapter 3. Chapter, chapter 3. That's the Islander accent. <laughs> chapter 3. <Ooh. laughs> Alright, y'all have a good night. <laughs> oh, praise God. Thanks, sis. Okay. <laughs> we're going to get into this. Hallelujah. In Romans 8.1. Therefore, therefore reason. Oh, yes, therefore, this is a big reason now, like a big butt. This is, this is a big reason. Therefore, therefore reason. This is a big reason. Ooh, this is awkward. Let's wait for some people to sit down. Let's not look around. Let's, let's, let's not look around. I love you guys. <laughs> we're, we're just in a teasing mood, right? Praise God. Oh my goodness, don't be so serious. Right? Therefore, now, no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus. Amen? Yeah. Say with me, no condemnation. no condemnation. Now, we can leave this right here because I'll tell you right now, if you have an NIV Bible, this is where it's left at. Okay? And we're going to leave that right here for now because Holy Spirit, He's the teacher. Say thing, Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. 
In Christ Jesus. Say this word with me, in. In. In Christ Jesus. Amen? Say it with me, in. In. Hallelujah. In Christ Jesus. One more time, say it with me, in. In. So, if I know that salvation is in this room, Am I saying it? If I know, come on now, if I know that deliverance, breakthrough, revival is in this room. But they stand here. Am I saying it? But see, hallelujah, when it's in, Sister Melissa, a brother just said, 
says, what happened? Come back to church where we love you, there's no judgment, but you need to be in the presence of Holy Spirit and other believers. But yet, what happened? I don't want to go there because people just judge me. I don't want to go there because I got a problem with this person. And you guys know, I'm just letting you know. Here's a spoiler alert. If you come at me this way, I will listen to what you have to say. Pastor is the same exact way, yes. In the name of Jesus, I can speak for him. Same exact way. But let me say this to you, please. May I say this? When you're done speaking, you're going to have to hear what I have to say. Yes. And listen to what I have to say, because what I have to say, I'm not allowed to just say what I want to say, it's what he has to say. Yes. I'm going to help him. I'm, I'm not going to go to hell for nobody. Can I get an amen? I'm not going to go to hell for nobody, which means I will tell you things that's going to hurt you. But it always goes back to 10 times out of 10. Is he not worth it? Hey. Hey. I heard what you said. I heard how that person hurt you. I heard that you're afraid of being judged. But you're telling me you're not going to do it. Let me just cancel all that. Is Lord Jesus Christ worthy? Yes. Did he not go through enough? Amen? Yes. Say it with me, conviction. conviction. You see, to continue on in how this scripture, Romans 8, 1, was truly wrote, we have to continue in the King James Version. And this is what it says in the Father, in the Son, and in the Holy Spirit. This is what we know. As, say it with me. Agape. agape. Amen. Father, Son, Holy Spirit. Say it with me. In agape. in agape. This is what it says. In Christ Jesus, who walked not after the flesh. Are y'all hearing me now? But after the Spirit. Now, I'm, you guys know me for over three years, some of you longer than that. You guys know, you can ask Pastor, I'm not one who's a stickler on what version of the Bible. Yeah. I'm not. For those of you who come to my house, you guys see, I got almost every version of the Bible. And I go to wherever the Holy Spirit leads me because he's the teacher. Amen. 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 Let's give him praise, amen. He's, that's not me, he's him. My question to you is, how important is it to know the second part of this? See, because it's easy to say, I'm in Christ Jesus, so now there's no condemnation. So I can walk around, live my life willy-nilly, get my swag, right? I can, I can walk around, I don't need to forgive nobody. I can grumble and complain. I can go to church after church and hurt people and cause division. Are you listening to me, family? I can do whatever I want, but because I'm in Christ, there's no condemnation. But now let's look at the whole word, right? Let's look at the whole word in Romans 8.1. God says there's no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. But listen, who walk not after the flesh. Meaning that you don't live your life based on your own. That means that you don't walk this life based on your own lust and your own desire. And it's all about you, 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 me, me, me. It's all about what Joey wants and Joey this. And rebuke that. Say with me, rebuke that. And then listen, he talks about the same, but after the Spirit. Amen? 2 Corinthians 5-7 It's not on here, praise God. It's not on here, but it says walk by faith, right? Yeah. Walk by faith, not by sight. Right? When we talk about the convictions of things unseen, this is the conviction of God that lives in you. Does God live in you? Yes. Many of us say, well, Pastor Joey, the message is like every week you beat us up about where Holy Spirit is, where God lives, He is in me. Alright, I get it, but what's the point? Why are you speaking death? Step on your toes.
Let Holy Spirit break it. God wants us to get so intimate with Him that His light is shining through you. He wants to be God in your life. Amen. Remember what I discussed earlier. Holy Spirit just showed it to us. In salvation. In, right? There's no condemnation for those in. Amen? Amen. This is you. Hallelujah, this is open arms community church. This is our beloved church family. Covered by the blood of Lord Jesus Christ, we are unified in Holy Spirit. Amen? Amen. This is us. We are in there. But does God give you free will? Does God give you free will to hurt him? See, I love that. This is good discussion. Right? Does the Holy Spirit promote you in hurting God? No. Right? If we say that we're a Holy Spirit filled church, but yet what comes out of us is not promoting a relationship and intimacy with Lord Jesus Christ, then there's something going on within the temple. Amen? See, if there's something going on within the temple that the enemy is running around, why are we allowing it to stay? I don't judge anybody. I don't know what you're going through, right? I can only speak for me in my house, and I speak it over Open Arms Community Church, that in the name above every name, Lord Jesus Christ, that as we worship in moments like this, Holy Spirit's presence, His anointing, will get rid of things. Yes. Amen? Amen? Will you say with me, I don't want to be the same. I don't want to be the same. Amen? See, I believe strongly with all my heart, I know Pastor does, that if we approach God thinking that there ain't nothing wrong, where we better watch out. Because there's not one of us in here that got it together. I confess to you, I'm the weakest one in this whole church right now. I'll tell you that right now. I need help. See, and I hear other children now going, no, 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 I am. I am. And guess what? When you're weak, he is strong. Amen? When it's less than me, he is strong. Amen? But when it's, let's get out of this, right? Let's get out of this false, let's get out of this false walk. We walk by faith, not by sight. 2 Corinthians 5, 7. We walk by Lord Jesus Christ. We walk with Him. Hallelujah. I love this picture of the footprints in the sand. Amen. I was so blessed on that glorious wedding day with PJ and Ashley. Amen. Amen. That's why that voice of man of God was straight to us. That's, that's Jesus. Amen. 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 He carried us, right? Amen. But we have to understand, too, that when everything's okay and He sets you back down, He expects you to follow them footsteps. Amen. Hallelujah. I walk by faith, not by sight. Amen? Hallelujah. Come on, okay? And sometimes those footsteps, right? Sometimes those footsteps, if you don't focus on the feet of Lord Jesus Christ, and you take your eyes off of the footsteps, sometimes you may find yourself at the edge of a cliff. And immediately your natural wants to turn and make your own path, but what you don't know on your right side, the enemy's there waiting to devour you. It's called straight and narrow for a reason. Amen? Amen. Oh, Lord Jesus, help us. Keep us on the straight and narrow. Amen? Amen. Say it with me, faith. Amen. The assurance of things hoped for. Remember, God said light. Yes. Come on now. God said light. Yes. God said word, Lord Jesus Christ. Light, power, Holy Spirit. Amen? God, Jesus Christ, Holy Spirit. Amen? Say with me, God said light. Amen? So God asks you, when you say, let there be light. Hallelujah. When you say, let there be light. When you say that over your life, let there be light. When you say it over your children. But listen, some of your children ain't 
I'm going to tell you this right now. You all are here because Holy Spirit said come. Amen. Amen. You see, you can't tell me. It don't work. Holy Spirit lives in me. He owns me. He controls me. He controls me. My thought, I slip up. I fall every day. But when the slip up takes place, Sister Ashley, you know, you know what I'm talking about. God says, get rid of that. Right? Immediately. That's not my voice. Get rid of it. Amen? Hallelujah. God is expecting us. There's an expectation. Amen? For us to be vocal in our faith. 2 Corinthians 4, 13. I believe, therefore. I believe. Hallelujah. Benny said, therefore, reason. Yeah. Hallelujah. My beloved wife. Hallelujah. A plus. Yeah. Say it again. Second Corinthians four thirteen. I believe, therefore I. All right, good night. Do you believe? Yes. Do you believe in Lord Jesus Christ? Yes. Do you believe? Yes. See, I know you hear it all the time, and you hear it umpteen times. And praise God, it's never going to stop. We're getting raptured out of here. Amen. Amen. We got to get ready. We're gonna, you gotta get ready, amen? Come on, it's time to get ready. We're going, amen? See, that's between you and God if you believe it. I believe it with all my heart. We're getting amen. ready. Hallelujah. I believe. I believe. That's, that's me. That's you. I believe. I believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, amen? He's all I have. So Romans 14 22 says this. So whatever you believe about these things, keep between yourself and God. Blessed is the one who, hear me now, church family. Blessed, when the God says blessed is the one, get ready now. How many of you want to be blessed by God? Amen. Oh, hallelujah, good and good. You want our blessing, the overflow, amen? amen? Oh, Father, bless me with your presence. That's all we want. Amen. That's what makes us so peculiar as, as a church body. That's all we want to do is bless the Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. We grow together. We worship. We bless Holy Spirit. We just see, praise God, that's a new job, Brother Taylor. God's so proud of you, man. So happy. Amen. It's a new season. It's a new season. New season. Amen. Is your name Christian? Hey. Glory to God. Your name's Christian, huh? Y'all don't get jealous. <laughs> Praise God, Christian, hallelujah. Brother Christian, amen. You got praise Jesus, you got brother praise Jesus, right, PJ, and you got brother Christian. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Slow clap. Oh, my God. Slow clap. Hallelujah. Holy Spirit is working on you when you name that baby. Jesus name. Amen. And you pray your heart out. Praise God. Gold star. God. Also, what's the deal? No, I'll take that. And a two gold stars, a two gold stars. I love you. Hey, that, hey, but see, the beauty is, and the beauty is that's going to finish it. Because she was like, I can't take the credit for that. Hallelujah. Amen, yeah. Father. Yeah. Come on, brother. Be Father in heaven, name you. Amen. Hallelujah. My, my name was supposed to be Joseph. Things happened in my birth certificate. My birth certificate says that I'm Caucasian. It's a, I'm not, I can't lie when I'm up here. Elder Lance, don't even go there, brother. Please. please. Elder Lance, know some stuff. Please, brother. In the name of Jesus. Elder Lance, know some stuff. I praise God. It's just between us and the Lord. Yeah, my name was supposed to be Joseph. We'll just leave it at that. Blessed is the one. Blessed is the one who does not condemn himself or herself. Are you getting ready for this? So we all said we want to be blessed by God, amen? Oh, I want His presence. How many of you know that when His presence is around you or in you, nothing can come against you? Amen. Amen. I know. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Listen, forget about us. It's all about Him. I want your presence, Lord Jesus Christ. Listen to this. Blessed is the one who does not condemn himself or herself. How? By what he or she approves. We're living in such darkness right now. 
We have children of God that are so opinionated that rather than it be between them and Father God, they want to voice it out. Right? And not just voice it out, let's get other people that have that same, same right, and let's cause. And they think they're doing it in the name of good, but it's in the name of the devil. You see, when we take this gavel up and we start judging, and we start saying what we approve and what we disapprove, this is what Holy Spirit was teaching us earlier, how we discern and his light exposes fruit. But God doesn't expose the fruit in your gifts and anointing for you to be the judge. We have one judge. His name is Lord Jesus Christ. And it's us as children of light. Say that with me, light. It's us as children of light to just show this world, I don't judge you. You already know what you're doing wrong. But I will pray for you. I will love you. Come to church. I don't need to go to church. Yes, you do. Why in the world did Lord Jesus Christ come and die? Well, to save you. Yeah, but to save you from who? The devil. Okay, to save you from the devil, but the devil don't want you to go to church. Can I say that again? Yeah. Why did Lord Jesus Christ come here to die? Well, to save you. Well, to save you from who? The devil. Well, the devil don't want you to come to church, then what do you say? Well, you notice we live in a generation now where everything's self-serving. Why is that? There's no more conviction. There's no more conviction of the Spirit of God saying it's wrong. There's no more conviction in the Spirit of God here, in the heart, where you haven't been to church in a month. It's time for you to get up and come to church. There's no more conviction. Right? How can you call on the Lord Jesus Christ, but then you look at other women and at the same time you're married? That's not Holy Spirit. If you say it is, you don't know who God is. Say it with me, conviction. See, God convicts on a daily basis multiple times. It all depends as far as what are we doing that hurts him. Right? You know what's amazing is that some people think that it has to be something extravagant that you do to hurt him. Come on, Sister Ashley, right? It could be as simple as the way we're speaking. That God would say, I no longer want you to speak that way. There's somebody that laughs, there's somebody that smiles, there's somebody that's like, yeah, I heard that voice. And it's up to us to hear and go, oh, Father, forgive me. Lord Jesus, you died for this reason. Change me, Lord. Change me. I will never speak that way to your beloved daughter. I will never treat my elders that way ever again. Change me, Lord. Change me. And you feel his presence in you. He's changing you. But then at the same time, God is saying, I want to see the fruit. Amen. Amen. And I promise you that as you have this relationship in conviction, when you, when you go after God and seek Him, when you know that He's convicting your heart, Holy Spirit will get rid of that thing. Amen. Amen. He will get rid of that thing. Amen. Come on, Mom. Okay, you can preach this message. I love you. Hallelujah. So say it with me no longer. Because remember, the Word of God just says, you can condemn yourself. That's powerful. Now, when God Almighty is saying, ain't the devil condemning you, you're condemning yourself based on what you approve, because guess what? I got all holy and righteous and mighty, and now, oh, my stuff don't stink. But yet, I want to tell everybody else who's stinky. Yeah. And God is saying the whole time, look at how many stones you're casting. Look at how many stones you're throwing. Well, last time I checked, the only one that could throw the stone didn't throw it. Hallelujah. Yeah. 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 Jesus Christ. Amen. Yeah. You always see that the Bible. We're going to close strong with this. We're going to close, praise God. This is how we know that we belong to the truth. Truth. 
This is how we know we belong to the truth and how we set our heart at rest in His presence. If our hearts condemn us, listen, Holy Spirit right now is teaching and pray, praise God. And in this scripture, we're going to tie everything together and the Holy Spirit wants to deliver it. He wants to say exactly this right now. If you feel condemnation coming on you, whether it's in your thought or in your heart and how you feel, there's a reason why condemnation is coming because you are acting against Holy Spirit. And this right now is the defining moment in your relationship with God. Are you going to heed Holy Spirit and you're going to rebuke this condemnation in Jesus' name? Or are you going to continue forth in the condemnation? And this is how a lot of people trip up and unfortunately quench Holy Spirit. Lord Jesus Christ himself said, you say something against me, I'll forgive you. But do not quench Holy Spirit. Yes. Amen. 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 Listen, brothers and sisters, say it with complete reverence unto Holy Spirit right now. Holy Spirit's right here flowing in us and through us. Say it with me, Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit. Forgive me. Forgive me. Amen. Amen. Holy Spirit, forgive me. All we want is His presence. Amen. Amen. Now this is what this is what God's teaching us right now. If our hearts condemn us, we know. Say it with me. I know. I know. I know that God is greater than my heart, and He knows everything. Amen. Amen. How many of you know that God is greater? Amen. Amen. Say it with me. God is greater. So this is how condemnation wants to try to come. Amen. One, the devil wants you to play the judge. The devil wants you to be religious. The devil promotes religion. Why? Religion separates relationship. Ooh. Let me say that again. Religion separates relationship. Meaning you can be religious all you want and not have a relationship with God. I was one of them for years. Just me. Well, Trish, I guess. Okay. Come on, confess. Pastors out back there raising hands. How many of you were religious with God, right? But did not have a relationship, amen? Yeah. Look around, man. Keep your hand up because this is all for the Lord Jesus Christ now. But look at his mercy and grace, right? Even though you were that way, the Holy Spirit kept working on you, right? How does the Holy Spirit work on you? Conviction. Yeah. Isn't that beautiful? And now, now, now as you sit here, hallelujah, anointed child of God, you sit free because there's no condemnation because you're in Hallelujah, Holy Spirit, amen? Hallelujah. Give God a praise for that, amen? I'm in. Uh, I'm in. Dear friends, if our hearts do not condemn us, oh, check this out, this is you. Hallelujah, this is you. This is you, praise God, this is you. Dear friends, if our hearts do not condemn us, we have confidence before God and receive from Him anything we ask because we keep His commands. And, oh, it just gets gooder and gooder. Oh, my goodness. And extra cheese. And sour cream. And guacamole. Oh, my goodness. Just keep that. And. And do what pleases him. Say it with me. I walk by faith. Not by sight. See, when we focus on what we see in the natural, the enemy wants to use that. To put anxiety in us. To put worry. Hoping that we pay more attention to that. Rather than agape. Yeah. We cancel that. Amen. No more. Yeah. By the grace and mercy of God, I'm surrounded by warriors. Amen. Yeah. All I'm asking you as your beloved brother, as your pastor. When we start speaking, we need it. Every one of us, we need you to start speaking blessings. Don't get quiet with the Lord. Can I get an amen? amen? Don't get quiet with the Lord. Hallelujah. Say it with me. I am healed. I am blessed. I am favored. I am good looking. I am wealthy. I am healthy. I am wise. I am an overcomer. I am a beloved child of God. I am saved.
How many of you believe it's really hell? Sometimes we need this little pinch in the middle of the worship service, right? It's like, man, brother, I was just starting to feel so good and, you know, got loose. And why you gotta go pinch me like that? Come on. Some people need to hear that in order to wake up. Right? We live in such a dark world, as I said earlier, but in such a perverted generation that this devil is just wreaking havoc. And by the grace of God, when I talk to you, the teenagers, believe it or not, what wakes them up is not necessarily talking about the love of God because they know who Jesus Christ is. What wakes them up is when I tell them there's really a hell. And in this hell, you're going to burn for eternity. Meaning that, tell me your worst day. Was it getting shot? Was it holding the person that was dying? Was it getting stabbed? Was it getting raped, abused? I hate to bring up these things, but let's have a wake-up call, right? Let's think about that worst day. Was it being betrayed? Was it being abandoned? Maybe it wasn't a day. Maybe it was a series of days. Maybe it was years. May I tell you right now? Hell is eternally worse than that day. Are we still going to play games with the Lord? I know this message isn't that popular. Right? But at the same time, all I care about is standing before Lord Jesus and Lord Jesus saying, well done. Well done. Because there was that soul that needed to hear that and they repented. Amen? Because I believe that's what's taking place. And of course, there's some of you right now that's like, I'm good, Brother Joey. I'm good. Right? Well, guess what? There's only one perfect one. His name is Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. This is his command to believe in the name of his son, Jesus Christ, and to love one another as he commanded us. Don't you love that overlay? Yeah. His son, Father speaks over the son, Lord Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ commanded us to love God with everything. How do you love God with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength? It's only through one perfect man. His name is Lord Jesus yeah. Christ. And he continues on in this closing scripture. The one who keeps God's commands lives in him, and he in them. And this is how we know that he lives in us. We know it by the Spirit. Say his name, Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit. He gave us. Does Holy Spirit live in you, church? Yes. Does God Almighty actually breathe in us? Yes. If he does, stand up for me, praise God. If he does, stand up for me. You see, I love it when Holy Spirit overlays in the worship service, just simple scripture like this, and he just shows us in his divine anointing how this scripture comes together, right? You see, I've heard this message years ago in different ways. The bottom line is the Holy Spirit was speaking, whoever the mouthpiece was at that time. And I confess to you that I sat in that chair and I heard the Holy Spirit was speaking. And I would tell people and I look at I look at the pastor and I'd say, I'm good, everything's good, but truly I wasn't. There was something going on on the inside of me that I kept on feeding that thing. And how I kept feeding that thing, Brother PJ, is I held on to unforgiveness. I was so crunchy judging people because they didn't worship like I did. They didn't know enough scripture like I did. They didn't know the Bible. They didn't know Greek. They didn't know how to translate. I know it sounds silly, but I'm just confessing to you. But yet every time I heard, just like I'm talking to you now, all Holy Spirit, just using my mouth. God is saying, I'm trying to protect you. I'm trying to get into your holy holies. Where I belong, I'm trying to get rid of some things. But I'm asking you to make the move. I'm asking you to come at me in my altar as if this is the first time. And you know what? That day took place, but it wasn't in a church. It was in the car driving with my wife. <laughs> and it was after a worship service, and I was cussing her out.
Just come. 